Hello, good evening. It's Joyful Hermit here. Um, it's my, I'm taking a rest break from a lot of manual labor. Um, I've been gutting out some walls today and did a dump run and just about does me in. But I've been pondering some. I'm going to return to be doing more writing as a ca on my blog, The Catholic Hermit. And I may also do a little writing on the blog, um, Christ in the Present Moment, talking about the order of the present moment. But I've been thinking about my lapse in writing as a Catholic hermit for some time. It's been a while since I've really written regularly. And I feel that it's important to present a personalized view of the herm the hermetic tradition of the the hermit life lived out in our time period by yet another hermit um, I've never found any one hermit to be alike and uh, their vocations vary their calls vary their rules of life vary um, their affiliation uh, as far as canonical approval or privately professed or within a religious order or whatever, it all varies so much. And it even varies between dioceses and the perception or the view of the hermit vocation that a bishop may have, as well as um, for like privately professed and avowed um, the view or the leaning or the guidance of one spiritual director and, and his view on the hermit life. So, and it, and it also varies from the, the, the reading and the historical background of various hermits. But anyway, um, currently I've been reading a book by St. Godric of Finkale. Well, it wasn't by him, but it was his life and um, a priest in a nearby abbey in the, this is the early 12th century um, when he died, I think it was, um, had, had gotten to know Godric very well. And toward the end of his life, Godric opened up more about his earlier years and experiences he had as a hermit. And it's most beneficial to read the lives of various hermits you get a real broad-based spectrum of the way in which God calls individuals to no matter what their vocation and how it unfolds and how God utilizes each person's gifts and, and gives them graces. Um, I mentioned in writing today in the, the Catholic Hermit um, how my the living out of my vocation of the externals has altered drastically um, since leaving the, my previous hermitage and coming to a different one. And this, the externals have changed so drastically as to obviously affect my, my living out of the gospel rule and the platform of the nine S's, which I mentioned in my blog. But one of them is simplicity, and I've been called to a greater simplicity. And another is solitude, and the solitude I experience here is immense um, in comparison. There's there's no comparison. It's 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 um, practically on the verge of extreme. Other than when I have an occasional worker come, I have a man who will help me with the electrical coming tomorrow. But other than that, and, and I get to go to Mass once a week, um, part, partly the reason I don't go more often is because I used to love going to daily Mass until I started having injuries and, and was receiving a great deal of persecution in the diocese I was before. Um, anyway, I... I could go to daily Mass in the parish I'm attending now, in this other location, except for the long drive and the cost involved. 
because my finances have altered grossly, greatly. Um, I lost a great deal of my inheritance having to move and then ending up in a in a house that there had been some misrepresentation, a lot of things not revealed by the inspector, and uh, I got financially fleeced by a first contractor so who did some work. And so I'm doing a lot of the work myself. It's taking a long, long time. And it's adding a different dimension to my aromatic vocation as far as the great amount of manual labor and prayer that goes along with that and the austerity of the type of living. You can sort of see the room I'm in now. I'm in the process of, of gutting it and I had taken wallboard out. I've, there's been, I'm now over six ton of debris that have been taken to the dump and there's still more to go, but, but at least we're getting down. I'm, I'm getting down. I say we, I guess, Scott and me. I'm currently reading, um, rereading The Way of Perfection by Teresa of Avila. I encouraged an elderly friend, she's 85 or 86 from where I used to live, to read that. And we are sort of reading it together across the miles and can email comments or thoughts on it as we wish. And I hadn't read this, it's been about 16 or 17 years since I've read this book by Teresa of Avila, and it's amazing the guidance I am getting now in comparison to then. It's, it's as if she writes for us at various levels, and I thought I gained a great deal, you know, 17 years ago, and now I'm gaining even more from rereading it. And I'm on, I've just read chapter 40 today, and it talked about how one rises above the temporal and the rather mundane or petty aspects or distractions. When we get to a point of great, intense love of God, when we fall in love with God, to higher degrees. Um, and I would have to add that's also falling in love with Mass in its fullness to deeper levels and understanding it as the stairway to heaven. And um, I wrote a little bit more about that again on my blog, The, the Catholic Hermit. But, and I noticed there's another blog called The Catholic Hermit now. I'm, I'm so non-technical. I don't understand how someone else could take that name um, for a blog, but maybe it's because I didn't write frequently enough under that title. I don't know. However, um, you know, there's many, many Catholic hermits, and it's fine by me. I assume people will figure out after a while, readers will, that there are two different authors, two different Catholic hermits writing under that blog title. Um, Anyway, um, Teresa of Avila is rich and beneficial in the solitude and silence. It's, it's as if sometimes, especially when I'm having a pain siege, that she's sitting on the edge of the bed instructing me. It's quite beautiful, quite intimate. And um, today, while I was doing the manual labor, I was thinking a lot about my great love for Jesus and knowing that I don't show him nearly enough how much I deeply, deeply love him. And um, the solitude and silence, you know, maybe I can go for days without speaking to anyone. And it will be more so once I don't need the electrician or the man who uh, the Lord brought to me to help uh, re-roof part of the house. Um, it's just been an amazing process as to, and I thought, you know, had I not heeded God's directive to me to not go the path of canonical approval, my life and hermit life 
would have undoubtedly been quite different and um, formed in a different way. And now it's formed by God in such a marvelous way. I'm, I'm most grateful. Anyway, just a few thoughts. I'm going to try to get up from this little rest break, have a little something to eat. I eat very simple fare. I don't have a stove. I, I have just one sink, no hot water, no bathroom at this point in time. Um, so it's, it's, and it's fine, you know. I've adapted very well to this. I, it's amazing how God will instill in us our aspects of our rule of life, the platform or whatever that he guides us to have as our rule of life and how we adapt to it. It's, it's incredible, really. Um, but yeah, the, the solitude and the silence is very heightened now, and it's just been a year and a year and two days since I um, managed to drive a truck to this location, second truck, two trucks because I brought many of the trees that I that I dug up and planted them here they love it here but um, and I sold some of the trees and gave away many 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 perennials roses trees shrubs bulbs mm. it's, it's very interesting how the journey proceeds anyway um, God bless this real presence in you. I'm going to, this evening, try to um, saw out. I have a, a reciprocating saw, it's called, that I will cut a larger opening, make a doorway about five feet wide rather than the 32 inches it was. Um, I can pretty much do whatever with this place. <laughs> it, it can only get better. <laughs> And it's it's a very creative process working in this um, hundred and hundred and ten year old farmhouse. God bless this real presence in all of us. I hope you're having a very beautiful evening.